What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're going to be tying up the extra chunky Chevy Chernobyl. This is basically a uh, Chevy Chernobyl with three layers of foam. So it's just extra thick, should be extra floaty. Uh, we're going to be using a stealth hook for this. This is a D-series, uh, dry series, uh, size 6. And we've got it in the vise. And now for the thread, I'm going to be using a wax thread by Semperfly. This is an 8-0. Um, you could also go a little bit heavier on the denier, maybe jump up to like a 3 aught um, but uh, I'm just going to go with this uh, um, 8-aught here, and um, we'll go ahead and start our thread right here on the shank, and I'll just do a couple wraps behind the eye, work my way down the shank, uh, just kind of getting a nice loose, um, you know, not touching wraps, but uh, get some thread down on this shank and then our first step is we're going to be tying in the tail um, which is going to be some flash I don't know where I picked this up but it's uh, like a red and black uh, crystal flash it's just gorgeous I love using it and I gotta figure out where I got it um, so that I when I run out I can uh, get more but these fibers are a little bit longer than your typical crystal flash um, I would say they're really really long and so what I do is I take about three or four and I'm just gonna fold them in half here and as I fold them in half, I just want to make sure that um, I got kind of a small piece here, but I'll just trim those ends so, ends so they're flush uh, roughly, and then I'll go ahead and tie those in on the shank of the hook uh, from about the point back. And as I work my way back, I'm just keeping that crystal flash together, and then uh, to get this to kind of stick up, I'll do a wrap underneath, and we'll go ahead and just tighten that down with some nice securing wraps and get our thread back up to the hook eye and uh, yeah I like that that turned out nice now as I get up towards the hook eye we're gonna do this one a little bit different than I have done my previous video on the uh, Chernobyl and uh, we're gonna take some uh, uh, craft store foam this is uh, about a two millimeter in thickness it's black comes in a big sheet I'm just gonna cut a little strip about an eighth of an inch wide and uh, in previous videos the way I usually do it is I palmer this but here we're just going to do it a little bit different this is made be more how most people do it out there and I'm just going to take this uh, foam and secure it here right behind the hook eye and I'll figure eight that little crisscross right there to secure that down and then we're going to grab some uh, super glue this is a uh, gorilla glue <clears throat> not making sure not to get the gel I want this to dry fast so I'm just going to lay down a little bead right there not too much not too little um, too much and it's going to get all over your hands but well, what I'll do is I'll basically hold this foam down and then do some loose wraps palmering down this um, kind of ribbing it not pulling too tight and we'll get back to about the bend of the hook and that's where we're going to end I'll do a couple wraps just to figure out that's where I like it making sure the crystal flash doesn't stick to this and we cut it off but I'll snip that out and now I'll uh, get rid of that little butt end right there and then I'll crisscross back up trying to create a little bit of a uniform body while keeping this foam nice and loose uh, the looser the foam the more uh, buoyant or floating it will be because as you palmer it if you go too tight you could lose some of that uh, um, the open cells which create the uh, floatiness or buoyancy of the foam now for our body, we're going to be using some monster dubbing. This is uh, by Franken uh, Dub. Really good stuff. I uh, really like this. We're going to be using a black, and I'm going to be mixing a little bit of the red in uh, just to create uh, um, a color scheme here. Now, if you notice, this isn't really the color scheme I would probably fish these in. I'm just having a little bit of fun here, and uh, you'll see why in a minute. I'm trying to match the foam I'm using for the the, the chunky Chernobyl. And so um, I'm just going to mix some black and some red here together just to create a little bit of a, a unique color to match everything up. We're kind of going with the red and black themes. Um, so this is more just for fun, but it will probably still fish really well because it's, uh, you know, the silhouette we're going for and the uh, floatability. So this will have both of those properties. So we'll go ahead and just get a little section here of the body done and I'll go ahead and stop here at the, the hook point because now we're going to make, uh, we're going to be placing on our foam and to do this um, I've used my foam cutters already and you can see here um, I'm using the loco foam so it's shiny on both sides and the way that I did this is let's uh, cut to a different section of the video. Um, basically we have um, our glue here 
Um, I've got my foam cutter, foam sections I've already cut out uh, as testers. And you can see on the right here, this is a, a foam I bought that was already glued together. I've done this before where I've taken sheets of foam and glued them together, but you can also purchase it like this. But for today, we're going to go a little custom. Uh, I don't know if the super glue is ideal for this, uh, you know, but I want it to dry quick for the purpose of this video. And so it should work and should hold. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue onto each uh, section. And then as I push them together, I'm going to kind of wiggle it just a little bit so that I get the entire area covered with glue. And I'll just press down for a few seconds, 5, 10 seconds, uh, making sure that glue is even. And then I'll proceed to do it uh, with the top section. So we'll have three sections of foam uh, equaling about 6 millimeters. So you could either use 6 millimeter foam or you can create color combos. I don't think the fish care, but uh, they sure do look pretty in the box. So um, we're going to go ahead and hold that and then maybe what I'll do is I'm going to put this under this uh, uh, little my my cutter holder here add a little bit of weight to it and uh, I'll show you right here this is just a, a, a two pieces of foam glued together and let's show you how quick this is um, we're just going to go ahead and cut out a body here now when you're going through the two sections of foam you kinda gotta push a little harder I'm, I'm using quite a bit of strength here and then work your uh, tool out making sure not to ruin the cutter and we'll just snip out this little tag end here and that's as easy as it is that's a pretty thick body for a Chernobyl but we're gonna go big or go home so we're gonna do this uh, this three section and for this um, the the loco foam it's got a little sheen on it that's a little bit more difficult to I don't want to ruin it and so I'm gonna really push through this making sure I cut through that sheen and there we go I felt it now it should come right out um, but it, I'm worried about that glue and if you have problems I just use my scissors these aren't super fancy scissors these are scissors I use for foam and you know deer and elk hair and stuff like that um, but uh, we'll go ahead and trim this out and that turned out really nice so yep there we go. So I got a little bit of red. I got the sheen on both sides. Yeah, we got enough room here. Let's do another one. Um, <clears throat> let's just cut it while we're doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'll just put that other section on, uh, making sure to uh, uh, line up with the... Uh, so I, I leave a little bit of spacing between the two so that I'm not cutting flush. Um, but uh, you waste a little bit of material that way, but not a big deal and uh, there we go rocket pressure and there we go now if it gets stuck in there um, little trick use your scissors you could use a bodkin or anything and just pop it right out so that turned out nice trim that off clean it up and there we go that's how we take and glue the foam and cut it out so let's uh, get back to our fly and let's go ahead and place this now um, this is really thick foam I'm just going to place it evenly and we're going to do some loose wraps here on the top uh, making sure our thread goes in the same section a couple of times and then on our third and fourth wrap I'm going to now secure it with some tighter wraps and there we go so that is a lot of foam I probably could have gone with a heavier thread and I'd probably recommend that but it's working and it's holding so we're going to be using some centipede legs this is uh, the closest thing I had on the red and black theme we're sticking with it's kind of a more of a pinkish but it looks red and I think it's supposed to be red so I'm just going to cut out a couple of these and trim them in half so that we can start with our legs and I'll tie it in by placing it in that little groove there and once I get one wrap I'll secure it place it where I want on the bottom section of that foam and then we'll go ahead and do it on the other side. Look at the shimmer of that top of that. That's also on the bottom. So, should be really fishy. I hope, at least. But <clears throat> anyway, so we'll just secure those legs on each side. Now, um, I use usually some like uh, EP trigger point fibers for my wings. But uh, let's really make this kind of a cool and unique fly. And we're going to um, use some, uh, you can use deer or or elk hair. This is um, Deer Belly by Nature Spirit. It's the only red I had 
And so we're going to go ahead and cut out a little section of that, a uh, little smaller section, about the clump of um, a pencil maybe. And we'll just brush out these uh, butt ends here um, the best you can using a comb. And it's kind of hard to work around this camera, but we're, we're making do. And then we'll go ahead and place them in our hair stacker so that we get our tips somewhat aligned. I'm not necessarily too concerned with keeping them perfectly aligned, but just enough that it, it allows taper and um, a little bit of uh, uniqueness, but keeps those tips somewhat together. It makes it a little bit easier to create that uh, wing. So um, we've got our tips aligned. I'm going to go and kind of measure and cut off these butt ends so that we're tying in um, something uh, and don't have to trim too much. And to keep these all on top, I'm just going to do a single wrap around those, those butt ends. And then as we place it, I'll go ahead and crank down on my third and fourth wrap right there in the crease. And now, as we do that, I'm going to, just like I do on all my caddises, I'm going to pull some of those fibers back and trap them up and in the thread as I crank down. And bam, that is a bright red wing that we'll be able to see. So trim out these uh, butts right here. Not necessary to keep them in unless you uh, want to save a step. It's on the top of the fly, so it doesn't matter. But the fishermen and anglers, it will matter. And some of that walked over on the other side. A common problem, even with that wrap around the butt ends, it still kind of walked a little bit on me as I cranked down. Now we'll just make sure I get all my butts out. But man, that looks pretty good. Now. Um, as for durability, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, super glue here just on those butt ends, let it soak in, do a couple more wraps just to really keep all that in nice and together uh, because I don't want my wing falling off after the first hit. You know, I'm, I'm securing this down the best I can, but you know, if a little bit of super glue allows me to fish it a lot longer, I'll do it. So we're now ready to uh, dub over this and also the dubbing will help to push that wing back um, so that it you know, looks a little bit more like how it's supposed to. And we'll also be securing this uh, uh, dubbing into that super glue which also creates more of a durable fly. So just pull that wing back, kind of a really thick noodle here and making sure you know it's around that thread and as I come up and over um, and finish off with the the dubbing here I'm going to do one more wrap just in the middle of all that and secure it and then get my thread up and in front of that foam. Now this is where the challenge is going to be tying one this way. Um, in previous flies or my Chernobyls the way I usually do them is I dub the whole body um, and then come back up it but you know a lot of guys uh, dub it as they go that way you don't see the thread um, I usually brush mine out and so that's not too concerning but for how thick this foam is we're gonna have to um, keep that uh, there and so it's gonna take a little bit longer to dub this body because with just one single sheet of foam it just folds right back over uh, but I don't want to ruin that elk uh, the deer belly uh, wing and I don't want to create any weird creases in my foam and so we'll just take it nice and slow, just barely pulling it back, using our fingers to keep these legs out of the way. And then we'll just go ahead and dub that body. And this, this body is not super duper secure at this point um, because it's so thick. And I'm not using any glue to secure it to the dubbing. Um, but as soon as I do the front of this, it's going to be solid and uh, not want to shift. And then we'll get up about maybe a width or two of an eye behind the eye and then there we go we are ready to go you can see how by folding it back I kind of raised that butt end just a little bit should be fine now we're going to place it on top and this is where we're going to secure everything in place now and make this uh, ultra durable foam sit on top I'm just going to do about five to six wraps there check my dimensions I like it I'm going to crank down a little bit harder now, and it is in place. And we're going to place our rubber legs just like we did before. I'm keeping them in the lower section of that foam. Once you have a wrap uh, through those, you can go ahead and just place them and shift them around. And we'll go ahead and get the other side as well. I'm trying to keep all these legs out of here. 
there we go and that looks pretty good so now we're just going to repeat our uh, step we did for the rear section but um, we're going to need to make this front wing a little bit longer so I'm going to select some longer hairs out of this deer belly section the longest ones I can find actually and we'll hopefully they're going to be long enough so we'll uh, go ahead and cut them out clean out the butt sections uh, brush out any under fur you can um, kind of flick it with your finger to get rid of any shorter hairs that uh, aren't really uh, going to be tied in and then as we um, <clears throat> get ready to place it we're going to stack it first like I said before we're not ultra concerned with having the tips uh, aligned perfectly but we want to make it generally um, in the right order so I'll just give it a couple taps here um, maybe five taps and then we're good to go so I'll pull them out and now we're going to trim off the uh, the butt sections, but not trim out as much as we did before. Uh, I'm going to try and look and see where my shortest hairs are, and I'll go ahead and cut about there. So this is a lot longer. I cut more on the back section on purpose, and we'll go ahead and do the same process as before. Wrap around it once to kind of keep all those uh, hairs in place. And as we come down on the second wrap, Go ahead and secure it now with some tighter wraps, making sure it's right in the middle up on top, and we are golden. So we are cranking on that. Look at that. That's a perfect wing. There we go. I really like how that turned out. The front one leads right into the rear, and uh, this is going to sit high, be visible. If um, we weren't doing the color scheme, my probably want this in a yellow or orange or something that I could see quite as easily red um, we'll see how it goes sometimes I struggle with pinks and, and reds personally on the water but um, everybody's different so use whatever color works for you when you're doing these uh, these wings so that you can see them now the only downside to using this uh, this hair versus the EP fibers is the EP fibers or trigger point fibers tend to lay down a little bit better and so these are just going to stick up um, so I kind of want to make sure I fan them out uh, so that it gives that silhouette of the wing and we'll go ahead and place the glue like we did before do a couple securing wraps and let that glue soak in just to keep all that hair making sure our legs are in the right place I don't really like where this one is oh and there we go that's what happens sometimes and it's an easy fix at this point because we can just grab another leg and tie it in. That uh, makes me a little nervous of how I had it. Uh, I didn't like where it was at. I wanted it to be on the bottom of the foam. So we'll just do a couple wraps there and we are golden. And we're back in business. So quick fix. So, you know, anybody that says they tie perfect flies and have no problems like that, I say you're lying. But... Maybe somebody has good, better luck than me. I have stuff like that happen all the time, and you got to learn how to recover and adapt. So we'll dub over this and making sure we give a, an extra wrap afterwards to just secure that dubbing down, making sure we're not trapping any legs. And now comes for the really fun part of getting a little bit of dubbing between that foam and the uh, the eye. And that's going to be fun because this is some really thick foam, doesn't, bend as easily and once we bend it I don't know how well it's going to return so let's go ahead and give us a nice thick noodle we're going to make this happen and make it work out to be of our benefit um, I actually <clears throat> you could potentially trim this head um, I've done that on some before but I want to see if I can do this under the pressure of being um, on uh, recording this that's you know usually uh, adds a little bit of pressure so let's get all these legs out of the way and start dubbing backwards up this and we are there I like that and then we'll just get up towards the eye push all our dubbing back some of that got, I got a little heavy clump there and so I'm able to manipulate it with my fingernail and then we'll do a couple wraps here to basically clean up our eye and then we're ready to whip finish so that was not as bad as I thought and that should return back to normal and we've got a wing 
if anything that will help it uh, even skate a little better with it being pressed up like that so thick foam doesn't return as easy so let's go ahead and uh, whip finish this I'll do a, a three turn whip finish and that went smoother than I was hoping for no legs held back and it weren't really well let's do a second whip finish and yep this is more what is I, I was expecting to happen so sometimes you just got to uh, hold these legs out of the way um, you know use your all your fingers and we'll do a couple extra turns on this whip finish and that is it so let's uh, cut our thread out and now we just got to do some trim work and then we're done um, so the wing looks nice I like uh, using this hair it's kind of fun should ride nice. Let's trim our tail a little bit longer than the foam. And now let's trim up our legs uh, roughly um, one and a half times the, the hook gap. And I just usually eyeball those. Um, and that looks good. Now for this one, let's go ahead and trim the head. Um, we're going to brush out at the bottom and then we're going to trim the head. The brushing it, uh, these fibers, the, the monster dub is a little long. I just pull it out and kind of prick them off with my fingers and get them to length that I want and then we're gonna go ahead and trim this about even with the eye so I'll just do a flush cut right there and then I'll just kind of trim these edges to make it a little more round and that's pretty much it so these color combos isn't something I typically would fish but uh, I wanted to utilize the local foam and kind of tie it in and make kind of a really fatty chunky Chernobyl that looked really cool so um hope you uh, enjoyed uh, watching this and maybe learned something make sure you click uh, subscribe and uh you know comment if you have any questions but thank you for watching and i uh, hope you enjoy tying it up